On the 12th of April 1992, Europe opened the doors to its very own Disney theme park. This year marks its 20th anniversary, and we are taking you behind the scenes to find out what it takes to create these milestone celebrations. This project's huge. We are literally going to transform the castle. This has never been done before. There's no room for error. Join us now as we show you how they make the magic. When Walt Disney built his first resort in 1957, he enlisted a team of experts who all had the same vision as he did, creating and building new experiences for his park visitors to enjoy. These people were given their very own title, Imagineers, and today they're still dreaming up new and exciting experiences. Steve Davison is the chief Imagineer behind a brand new animated show for the celebrations. Are we ready? And over the past two years, has assembled a team to make the event come to life. I'm always terrified when we start a project because you really have to come up with something new and unique. For all shows, especially for me, it starts with the story. It's what really Disney is all about, you know, starting with kind of a seed of an idea and growing from that and then having technology and everything build on to tell that story. Well, because our park is in Europe, we were very, very interested in, in incorporating as much European flavor for our guests as we could. We have Lumiere from Beauty and the Beast, we have Peter Pan and Wendy from London, and we have Quasimodo from Notre Dame, which of course is right in the centre of Paris. I think what makes the project really fun is that you really get to play in a giant sandbox, that we get to use state-of-the-art technology and start to blend it and mix it. Well, initially we started off with a lot of different story approaches. And as we started to develop them, we really kind of started to jump into the idea of going with Peter Pan and using Peter Pan as kind of an anchor for a show. With the project in development for so long, their plans for the celebrations have been a closely guarded secret until now. So for our celebrations this year, we've decided to present a new parade and a brand new nighttime spectacular. The challenge is huge, which is why you know, we've called on a, a huge specialist team. We are literally going to transform the castle. When we start developing a show, we always start with the story and the characters and the journeys that we're going to go on. But then we cycle right into the music, because the music really is the heart of everything that we're doing. <laughs> music used in the new animated show was recorded in London at the world-famous Abbey Road Studios. Well, music is the narrative of the show. Music, in a way, drives the story. Joe has a challenging job combining classical Disney music with a new original music for the show. We use some you know, many iconic Disney songs some great songs like Be Our Guest, I Want to Be Like You from The Jungle Book, See the Light from Tangled. Joe has to deal with um, Disney classical songs in French and English too, and to give to this music a new, a modern color. It's a little bit of a daunting task because you don't want to do any harm. What a lot of people don't realize, is much of this music for Disney is very difficult has lots of notes and scampering around like the characters. When we start with the music and we start with animation, they work in tandem because we really have to get the sense of the music to work exactly with what we've animated. The orchestra basically is facing the conductor the whole time and the conductor is watching a screen and he is actually conducting so we can actually keep in sync and keep uh, locked in with the show. Sometimes we would have full animation up on the screens to conduct you. Sometimes it would just be little pencil sketches and wireframes. So it's really kind of an art to understand what you're looking at and, and to conduct to it. Back in France, show director Emmanuel Lenormand has been working on the new parade. Parades are a familiar feature in the park, but in order to do something to honor the celebrations, Emmanuel had to come up with something fresh. In the world of Disney, the parade means the big rendezvous once per day for all the guests in our parks. In the parade, you can see like 40, 50 characters 
so it means a lot for everyone. For the 20th anniversary parade, we have named it Disney Magic on Parade, because it's all about magic and lights and color and all the most famous characters from the animated movies. To create this parade, we have to work with props, costume, music, designers, choreographers, performers, so many people. So here we are in our props department. As we say, the high bay. This is where all of our artists work together, constructing and making the props and the accessories and the amazing floats. We have seven theme floats in the parade. The one behind me, this is the finale float. On it will appear Mickey and all of his friends dressed up in their magician costumes celebrate the grand finale of this parade. Every float in this parade starts with a base. In that base, you have the speakers and the effects and the wheels and the drive unit. On top of that, we will build a sculpted metal casing. Onto that, we will project a liquid paste that's called resin, and then it's painted, and then it's sparkled, and then all of a sudden, it comes to life. The drivers of the floats play a very important role. They drive behind very carefully hidden little windows, or sometimes they may even become a performer. We've been working over a year to get this parade out on the street, and it's almost ready to go. It's a very, very exciting time. Next to the props department are the rehearsal studios. This is where all the parade performers learn their song and dance routines. All performers are known as cast members, and rehearsing for their new parade is no easy task. Vicky and Adrian are two British cast members who have been working at the park for over six years. We're here today rehearsing for the routine for the Mary Poppins flight. It's incredibly physical. It's a lot harder than uh, most of the things that I've done for Disney so far. There's lots of jumping, lots of running, lots of changing places, all at the same time as coordinating your tambourine with your feet. Learning the routine in English and French can be very difficult. Ça va? C'est plus clair. Pour moi, c'est plus clair. But because I've been here a long while, it's, I've kind of got used to working that way. We work really hard here. It's very important that we, we put, turn out a good show. Working with Emmanuel in the new parade is so much fun because he's very energetic and excitable. He gives us corrections how he wants it, and we can put our own twist onto it as well. I would like you to do it again, but with a great smile, great energy, because it's all about fun. The biggest challenge that I've faced personally rehearsing this parade is stamina. As a performer, the parade will last for approximately 25 minutes. We are moving constantly, we're non-stop, always dancing, always going, no breaks, always keeping up the energy. With such a physically demanding show, it's vital that all the elements work together to provide a seamless performance. I'm a little nervous about performing in the costume. It may be slightly restrictive. We have a vague idea of, we've seen pictures of the costumes. They do look very, very nice. The costume department at the park is the biggest in Europe, housing millions of costume pieces and around 50,000 complete show costumes. There are 45 people working in the workshop seven days a week. This year we had to redesign and remake all the costume for the new parade. The theme of the new parade is magic. So we had lots of shiny and sparkling materials to bright up the costumes. Mickey has a fantastic new costume for this parade. With purple and brightness, with lots of gold into it. We've been hand sewing some little look-alike diamond in his coat to make him bright, to make it look colorful. Creating a costume for a parade is a big challenge because you have to face the sun and the winter and the snow and the cold. So you have to take all those factors all together and bring the best costume ever. It's necessary to be durable and strong because we are out performing every day. For the performer, I mean, they can perform for sometimes three, four times a day. So of course, uh, we have to do lots of costume for them. So if he needs to, then he can get changed and he can get something nice and comfortable because if the performer has to wear something he don't want to wear, then he won't dance as nicely as he needs to. It takes an incredible nine months for the costumes to be designed and then another four months to actually be made. 
Throughout the process, Emmanuel and his team are busy making sure everything is put together with complete precision. So it's very important to check how the costume moves with the performer because we want like the best movement for the, our parade. We have six magicians all together dancing in front of the float. So I want the perfect movement with, for all of them. It's very important that everything should be perfect. Coming up in part two, we reveal how the cutting-edge special effects of the nighttime show have been created. We can make the castle shrink, we can make it disappear. A celebrity audience gathers for the celebrations. I mean, I think it's going to be fireworks and laser and smoke and music. Vicky and Adrian prepare for their first performance. Um, a little bit nervous. And tension builds as Steve and his team prepare for the public to see the show for the very first time. Here we go. Welcome back to Making the Magic. We're behind the scenes following the cast members and Imagineers as they prepare for their anniversary celebrations. Let's hope everything goes okay. So far, we've seen how the new music and parade have been coming together. It's all about fun. As the countdown to the event begins, we're going to follow Vicky and Adrian as they perform the parade for the first time. It's nearly time to go. <laughs> but now, we're going to reveal the secrets behind the new nighttime show. Disney Dreams is a voyage into the world of classic Disney films through the eyes of Peter Pan's shadow. He will take us on this journey into romance, into adventure, into mischief, into the evil worlds of the villains, um, and we finish with this spectacular huge finale. It's insane how much equipment we have to make the magic, but what I really strive for is not to let you see that. Everything you see is massive technology and massive computers, you know, crunching data to make this show happen. But what you're seeing, you will never, ever understand that. But it really takes a mountain, really, of machinery to make this work. The tools we're using for this project are big fountains, huge flamethrowers, custom fireworks, and we're using video projection onto the castle. This has never been done before on this scale. Just off Main Street, in the heart of the park, sits a quiet little garden shed with a difference. What's great about the show is we actually have our whole control set up, kind of our mission control, right on Main Street, and you would never know it. It just looks like this beautiful outcropping outside of the castle with this fun little building, but when it opens up at night, it actually contains all the technology for the show that actually drives the whole experience. With all the key Imagineers and technicians huddled inside, the show can be programmed, rehearsed and controlled within sight of the castle. But how does it all work? The big set piece for the show is actually the castle. When you look at the castle, we've actually video mapped it, which means we've come in with lasers and we've identified every surface. And then we're gonna front project onto that castle with magnificent animation that will transform it in front of your eye. We do that with uh, a number of different projectors that are all controlled by video servers. And inside that video server is a very, very complicated 3D model that was uh, created by laser scanning the castle. And then all of our artists draw on top of that model in 3D. And so that's where we're allowed to take uh, the Quasimodo character, for example, and swing him around the different turrets of the castle, and it looks as though he's swinging around there in, in real life as a three-dimensional object. What's cool is when you get the mapping done and you start to develop media, we can make the castle shrink, we can make it disappear, we can make it collapse, we can literally transform it in front of your eye. We can make turrets flip upside down, and it's like visual magic. The other thing we're doing is coming back at you are water screens. And water screens are basically just beautiful kind of half circles of water. And then we're projecting characters on those. So we get a really cool multi-plane effect in a way we've never done before, where we're front projecting and then back projecting at the same time, kind of creating this illusion of characters on surfaces that they're not. The moat is not huge. It doesn't have a huge amount of water in it, so there was a lot of technical studies that needed to be done. We had to empty the moat, dig right down to see how we could use the water that we had and how the pump would re-pump into the moat. There's several types of fountains. We have the straight fountains, we have the movers, and then we have a couple of air chutes, which will reach almost to the height of the top of the castle. The combination of projection 
the fountains and the fireworks all work together in unison thanks to Steve's keen eye for detail. But Steve also had to think about what animation was going to be used. The animation really comes from two areas. One, new animation that we've done custom for the show, as well as using some existing animation from a lot of the movies that people have known and loved for years. We had a very talented group of animators doing characters like Peter Pan and Captain Hook, and we animated them so that they're actually projected on the water screens, interacting, as well as on the castle itself. I'm really pleased with how the animations turned out. The animation integrates into this show along with the pyrotechnics, plays along with the music, the lasers, the fountains, and it really creates a spectacular experience. Preparations for the show continue well into the night, and with the arrival of the big day, the time has come for Vicky and Adrian to perform the brand new parade for the public. It's time to get into character. After all the months of hard work, all the training we've had, all the different rehearsals that we've had, today is the day it all either goes as planned or doesn't. <laughs> It is a big thing that we are the first cast to do the, the parade because it's like first impressions to the, the audience. It's nearly time to go. <laughs> When you've got the guests in front of you, it gives you that extra bit of energy, that extra little bit of something to, to get you through, to give you, to make sure you give it your all. And with that, it's time for Vicky and Adrian to step onto Main Street. good fun so exciting it was excellent two months of hard work it's not been easy but with the guests in front of us it yeah. was it was brilliant it was well, really it. really good fun with the parade performance over and only a few hours to go before the opening of the nighttime spectacular last minute preparations are taking place a purple carpet is being rolled out fountains are being installed but Steve and his team have found last-minute problems with the projectors. There's a big blue square that appears in the middle of Jungle Book, which I've never seen. With so little time, they can make no mistakes. For me, I think the most nervous thing is that all the technology will talk to each other. We need to look at fog, because the fog system's being temperamental at the end, and I don't know if it's wind or if it's just stuck. My biggest fear is coming up against something that happens that we haven't thought of. Something's not working as it should be, and we didn't think about the contingency for it. There's a lot of technology coming together here, and sometimes things don't come together as we expect. With the arrival of the world's media, Steve has to leave it within the hands of his team. The show has drawn attention from all over the world, including some familiar faces. It's still a dream to be here. It's very, very exciting. I mean, I think it's going to be fireworks and laser and smoke and music. I don't really know what to expect. I'm very excited. There's something about the way they use music when they put it together in those spectacular shows and you're outside seeing it that is always very moving and very memorable. As the audience make their way to the castle, Steve, Katie and Chuck prepare for the show to be seen for the very first time. waiting for the show to step off, I'm going to be like a nervous wreck. Break a leg, everybody. I'm actually very excited. I want to show it to the world and have them be as excited about it as I am. You spend, you know, years working on these, and then this is kind of the pinnacle of the whole thing. Good luck, everybody. Have a great show tonight. Let's hope everything goes OK. I'm still a little nervous. Here we go.
the heart of my job at being an Imagineer is to truly give memories. It's kind of at the heart of what I do. What I love about doing these shows is really the children. When you watch them watch the show and the wonder in their eyes and everything that they see, it's really special. Seeing the show come to life will be an amazing sense of accomplishment. I'll be exceedingly proud of this team. Uh, they've worked very, very hard. This has been a great experience. We've had some huge challenges, and everybody's worked so well together, um, and it's such a wonderful project, and their work shows in the result. The show went without a hitch. There were no issues at all tonight. Oh, it was amazing. It was totally brilliant. I was dumbfounded. It went perfect. Technically, I thought the show was amazing. I just thought it was so incredible the way that they pulled all the elements together. I, I just have no idea how they do it. It was really clever. And I would think it takes a lot of work and a lot of planning and a lot of preparation. But they did it so well. The last month has been particularly intense, <laughs> but it was worth every single second of it. We, we did, did it! it! Well, the magic continues later today as Woody and Buzz return for the Disney Pixar classic Toy Story 2 at 4 with our spellbinding new series Once Upon a Time at 8. Next, Animal Rescue Squad.